Hi there. I'm the unglamorous gardener and I'm going to talk about cutting back for winter. I bet when you heard me say cutting back you thought I was going to talk about dieting and losing weight. Well I'm not. I'm going to talk about cutting back perennials to neaten up the garden for winter. And of course you don't need to cut anything back at all but there are two good reasons why you might need to neaten up certain areas. And the first is if a border is prominent in your garden, you don't want to be looking out at it flopping around, the perennials falling around all winter. So cut that one back. And then, if you have an area of spring bulbs, it pays to think about this in advance and you want to think about which area is going to look good earliest next spring. So if you have spring bulbs, get out there and cut that at back now because you don't want to be going out in February through two inches of snow trying to find where you left your snowdrops, where you planted your snowdrops. We've all done it and it's no fun. And as they say in all the best food programs, this is a little something I prepared earlier. So here's a part of the garden that I've already cut back. I've already done the, the winter cut back. And um, you can see that all the perennials here on this side have gone down to the ground. Campanula, lichness, etc. That grass is looking brilliant at the moment. It's a penicetum. And um, you can see it's covered in ladybirds. Here are my two gargoyles, misanthropy and Dr. Acula. But for me, the most important thing about cutting back is to make sure that the garden looks okay for the winter and it's not annoying me. Also, you need to get your priorities right. And the first priority is to make sure that areas like this one, where there's a lot of spring interest, a lot of snowdrops and primulas, that it's cut back so that they can find their way up in spring. Also, you can see that now that the perennials have been cut back, we can appreciate the, the nice um, peeling bark on the Acer grissium. Big things like tetrapanics, of course, I'm not going to cut back. If the frosts get that and levy it, then so be it. But otherwise it's just going to stand. A little word on the grasses on the corners. That's Stipa gigantea. And of course, we don't cut back grasses except in spring and some people don't recommend cutting Stipa gigantea back at all but I cut it back. I um, cut it into a neat mound in spring though. And down we go and here we can see that some plants are still you know they're still proving their worth in the garden. Beside the wheel there on the right is a lovely Sanguisorba pink brush as it's called and it's still looking really super despite it being November. Down on this side as well we have um, Cotlea spicata still fl flowering beautifully and a podophyllum in there behind that and here we have my shadow mostly but some other things that are looking good at the moment including um, that uh, perennial Nicosiana, which I hope to see again next year, still flowering its socks off, off. So coming up this border here, and we can see, for example, the Knipfophia on the corner. Can you see the Knipfophia? Knipfophia, the um, red hot pokers. Now it's a personal choice as to whether you do things like take off the spent flower spikes. I like to leave them on. 